Hi guys, this is Miss Anderson. We're here for third grade math, week five, day two. Remember, if you are in the third grade, Miss Levine, Miss Anderson, or Miss E is your third grade math teacher. This is where you should be. We're gonna pick up from where we left off yesterday and continue working on lesson 23, instruction to math. We are going to work on pages 244 through 249. Our objectives are the same as yesterday. I'm gonna go through them again. I can measure and estimate masses of objects using standard units. And I can solve one-step word problems involving masses that are given in the same unit by using a drawing to represent the problem. Our vocabulary is measure, estimate, which means making an educated guess. We want to get as close as possible to the answer as possible. Masses, or you may know, know it also as mass. And remember, mass is how heavy something is or how much it weighs. Standard units, that's just the type of unit we use when we're talking about mass. And those two units that we use are grams, which sometimes you may just see written as a G, or kilograms, which you may see written as kg. So now let's look at our problem. It says Nick has an orange that has a mass of 220 grams. Let me backtrack for a minute before we get into this because I just remembered one other thing. Remember when we talked about it yesterday, we said that one gram is equal to one paper clip and one kilogram is equal to one hardcover book. Okay, so let's keep that in mind while we're working. Now back to our problem. Nick has an orange that has a mass of 220 grams and an apple that has a mass of 110 grams. What is the mass of the orange and apple together? All right, so it says you can use a balanced scale to help you solve the problem. The balanced scale shows the mass of the orange. So if you see we have 100 grams, 100 grams, so that's 200, and then you have 210 gram weights, which all together equals 220 grams. And then you have the balanced scale, which shows the mass of the apple. You have 100 grams and 10 grams all together that equals 110 grams. The balanced scale shows the mass of the orange and apple together. The orange and apple are on one side of the scale and the weights are on the other side. All right, so let's see what they want us to do. How do you decide which operation you use to solve the problem? Well, if we go back to the problem, let's look at our question. Okay, and I'm gonna actually underline that for us. All right, so our question says, what is the mass of the orange and apple together? Okay, so we wanna think about our keywords. And I know that together, means to combine. And when we combine something, that means we're going to add. So if we go back down, it says, how do you decide which operation to use to solve this problem? All right, so for number eight, we're gonna write, I would look at the keyword together, which means to combine or add, all right? Don't forget, you can always pause to, um, so that way you can write your answer in, okay? It says, look at the balance scale and picture it. That shows the orange and apple together. What does the picture show that could help you solve the problem? So if we go back here, it shows us all the weights that it takes to equal the apple and the orange. So that's gonna let us know how much the apple and the orange weigh together. So the picture shows all the weights combined to equal the mass, we're gonna use those great vocabulary words, of 
the apple and the orange. All right, so now we have, matter of fact, let me make this bigger so you guys can see it a little better. Oops. All right. Number 10 says, write an equation for the problem. What is the mass of the orange and apple together? So if I want to write an equation first, what do I need? What's going to be the first part of my equation? Good. If you said using the mass of the orange, you are correct. So in our problem, it says the orange has a mass of 220 grams. So 220 grams plus, because remember we said we're combining or we're adding the mass of the apple, which has a mass of 110 grams. All right. And now I want you to solve to see how much 210 grams plus 110 grams equals. Pause to give yourself some time to add it together. All right, so if you said that C equals 330 grams, you are correct. Remember, we want to make sure that we put our unit of measurement so that we know what that number is referring to. Good job, guys. Now it says explain how you could estimate to know that your answer makes sense. So how would we estimate to know that... 330 makes sense to us. So let's look. The orange has a mass of 220. The apple has a mass of 110. So I can make these numbers easier for me to solve. And I know if I just make these, let's say 200 and 100, I know that would be about 300. And then both of these, the orange is a little over 200. And the apple is a little over 100, so I know my answer would be just over 300 grams. Okay, so I'm going to write that in here. So I can make the numbers easier to add by adding 200 and... 100. This gives me a total of 300. The orange is a little over 200 grams and the apple is a little over 100 grams. This means the combined mass would be just over 300 grams. So again, guys, I would make my numbers easier to add. So again, if the mass of the orange is 220, I can just make that 200. And then the apple is 110, which means I can just make that 100. And if I add 200 plus 100, that gives me 300. Both are a little over that 200 and 100 mark, so I know it would be just over 300. All right, let's add that to our paper. All right, and remember, always pause to give yourself some time to answer. So now number 10 says, explain why the label grams should be part of your answer to this problem. So remember, we've talked about this before in the past. Anytime we have any kind of problem, we always want to put a label on it. Think about what we talked about in the past and why we should have grams on the end of our answer. If you said or if you thought because we need to know what that number means, you are correct. Okay? So, grams should be 
part of my answer because we, sorry guys, need to know what the number represents. All right, so again, we always wanna put a label on any problem that we have, whether it's weight, whether it's, whether it's math, volume, we're talking about cookies, we're talking about anything. When it comes to math, you always wanna put a label on the end so that way whoever reads your answer knows what that problem is referring to, okay? Because if you don't, they may not know what 200 is, or 330, 330 what liters, dogs, cats. So it's very important to always, always, always put a label at the end of your answer when it comes to math. Alrighty, let's look. It says, use what you just learned to solve these problems. Show your work on a separate sheet of paper. Jeff had 40 grams of birdseed. He shared it equally among four birds. How many grams of bird seed did each bird get? So let's draw this out. Okay, so we have bird number one, bird number two, bird number three, and bird number four. All right, he's got 40 grams of bird seeds. All right, and four birds. So now if we were to do this, we would be here for a while counting one, two, three, sharing out these 40 grams. So what is another number we could possibly count by that might help us go a little quicker? All right, if you said five or 10, you are correct. We, I'm gonna use 10 because it's even an even larger number and I can get there faster. So I have 10, so these are 10 grams, 20, 30, and 40 grams. And even, we can even put our G on there so we know this, each one of these is 10 grams. So now it says, how many grams of bird seeds did each bird get? Well, if you look, each bird got 10 grams. And remember, we always want to put our um, our unit on the end. And yes, you can put 10 just and just put a G on there as well. It means the same thing. All right, now next one. Micah's dog has a mass of 23 kilograms. Nate's dog has a mass of 8 kilograms. How much greater is the mass of Micah's dog than the mass of Nate's dog? So now we have a key word in there. I want you to think about what your key word is in your question. So here's our question. How much greater is the mass of Micah's dog than the mass of Nate's dog? How much greater is our key word, which means we're going to do what operation? Subtract, good job guys. So again, I'm gonna write this out. So, and I'm gonna use expanded form to help me. So I have 20 plus three, all right, and then our kilograms, we have eight. And I do not have any tens for eight, so I don't need to put anything there. Three, take away eight. Remember, we always start at the top. I don't have enough. If I have three cookies, can I take away eight? No. So I need to do what? Borrow from my neighbor. This 20 becomes a 10. And how much did we borrow from our neighbor? For in the tens place, we borrowed a 10, which means three becomes 13. 13, take away eight is five. 10, take away another thing is 10. Remember, we took it apart, so we have to bring it back together, which gives us 15 kilograms. All right, and we can just write that right here. All right, join me for part two to see the rest of the video and to work out the rest of your problems. Bye, guys. See you in a bit.